blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Mrs. Osazoa. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is a lifter up. He lifts us up when we are down. When, when we are down and out, his everlasting arms pick us up and cuddles us. Praise the Lord.
says as he stood to read make sure nobody next to you is sitting down John chapter 5 open it look at what God showed me this morning oh hallelujah John chapter 5 verse 2 now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, hot, withered, Waiting for the moving of the water. Great multitude of impotent folks. My prayer is that God will help you never to find yourself in a case you never bargained for. of where we are this morning if it were leprous colony and all of us God forbid leprous you turn left leprosy, turn right leprosy, look forward leprosy look back left, everyone around you leprous all of you were in blind camp this morning each one of us Saying things we don't see. The weather today, fine. Oh, ah, ah. 
you're just fine. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Oh, this, this house is a very nice house. This is a wonderful cathedral. Oh, very nice. Everybody you are talking to doesn't know what he's talking about. Because they have been told he's fine, he says it's fine. Or in a mental hospital. God forbid. Everybody next to you on left and right mad, plus yourself in the middle. Anytime you think of advantage, think sometimes there could have been disadvantage. And the good news is that the, the advantage point is you. Amen. I say the advantage point is you. Amen. The good side of the story is you. Attitude, impotent folk. Not one could say to the other, Thank God you are all right. Thank God you are okay. Or even think of a camp of hungry people. Everyone hungry, complain at the same time, cry at the same time, sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time. I have been told by some friends, You can be so hungry many times you can't find sleep when you go to bed. Think of the word here that the Bible used. Great multitude of sick folk gathered. And look at their sicknesses. Number one. Blind. Number two. Hot. Number three. Withered. Number four. All right. Blind. First of all, general impotency. Number two, blind. Number three, hot. Number four, withered. All waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Listen. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Do you know that many of us are running from troubled water? But this one went there and waited. What was their discussion? Very soon it will be my turn. Very soon, one day, God will make it happen. It will be my turn. But look at verse 6. I love this one. This is the, verse, the key verse for the day. When Jesus saw, oh, verse 5, a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad this is not you. I said, tell your neighbor, turn to your left, tell somebody, don't be afraid. I want you to be in pensive mood this morning because this is a good news day. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad this is not you. Listen to this. Among the sick folks, among this gratitude, there was a certain man singled out of the crowd, and he has been there 38 years. Not, not time of joy. Left home January some 38 years ago told the farm somebody told him said there's a pool Bethesda pool uh, we saw it two months ago the pool of Bethesda they were, he was told that if you get there and the water get troubled and you jump inside you'll be well so 38 years ago a good mathematician should tell me what year that should be in calendar from 19 what now 1950, no, it should be 54, 54, 58, 1958, 1958. Imagine leaving home 1958 to go for a two days visit or one day home. Then the whole month of January finished. The wife brought food on the 2nd of January. My honey, you'll soon be all right. The children came and said, Daddy, we are seeing you at home very soon. Very soon you'll be home. 
first month. Every day for the first one week, they were bringing the food on time. Second week, the feet began to slack. My darling, you didn't come on time today. And market was so far, rain fell, and I couldn't buy things on time, so that's why I'm late. But I'll come early in the evening. Then in the evening, she came in the night. What was her problem? Discouragement. Then children came for the first week, two times a day. By the time it was one, one month old, they were coming twice a week. By the time it was two months old, they were coming once a week. By the time it was one year that their father was there, they were coming once a month. Until after the three years, nobody came again. Think of if you were the one. 38 years of sorrow. Wife is disgusted. Family members. God forbid that you are poor in this town. If you are, if you were rich and you become poor, the people who call you uncle and cousin before, you will not see them anymore. That was how this man fell. Until totally, Dr. Aporero, nobody went there again anymore. He asked some of, was my wife here when I was sleeping? We asked some of his sick folks. They said, we didn't see your wife. The other one said, were you expecting him? Sir? Oh, yes. She said she was going to bring me food. He didn't come. Starved? Hungry? 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 Starving? Starved. Nobody come again. Until those who came to look at how they are feeling, throw some banana. But look at verse 6, one day. Say with me loudly, one day. One day. The master came. Say it one more time, one day. One day. The master came. The master Read loud, verse 6 with me. Come on, Pastor Lawrence. Verse 6, everybody. One to go. When Jesus saw him lie. Don't be hurried, don't be hurried. When Jesus saw him lie, say it loud. Try it, try it, try it. Read it again. And knew that he had been now a long time in this case. He said unto him, Do you need a change? Do you want to be relocated? I'm asking everybody, do you need a change? Do you need a change in your life? A change in your business? A change in your home? A change in wherever you find yourself? When? 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 Now. Two principal things. Jesus came. Say that with me. Jesus came. Number two, Jesus saw him. Jesus saw him. Life flat. Life flat. Jesus knew. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button 
on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. wife and children, relations, uncles and cousins, co-businessmen, neighbors. saw him lie and knew sometimes you think nobody knows how you feel I was on my knee here this morning and the Lord said call one of your relations when you get home I said no I got home, called this person. I said, no. The person should call me. One hour, one and a half hour, and the Lord said, you are not going to church unless you call this person. So I called my office. I said, go and call this my child. After 30 minutes, she came on the line. And apply them practically in your life then the special vocation bible school is the right place for you to achieve those dreams with all class faculty the likes of bishop sam imokwede bishop feb idahosa reverend dr festus ahimie reverend wali ajayi reverend chinidu chinwoku and reverend dixon ogbahon insightful and dynamic classes such as crane right the believer's authority discipleship charismata leadership and many more contact the special vocation bible school today at number one faith way of upper desu road gra Benin city our telephone numbers are 0704-228-1566 and 0704-316-7051 plus you are mondays and tuesdays from 5 p.m through 7 p.m and on Saturday from 4 p.m. through 7 p.m. Come, get trained at the Special Vocation Bible School today as your world awaits you.
After 30 minutes, she came on the line. I said, Rose, how are you? Her voice was so low. She said, I've been down. I said, Momolaria? She laughed. First of all, that Momolaria alone was a cure. She said, not Momolaria. And then I began to tease her on the phone. Her voice began to improve. This morning, she knelt down there thanking God. She was able to come. Sometimes things hook you. Sometimes things go so wrong near you. What you say is nobody understand. Nobody know what I'm going through. But you know the good news? God will fix it for you. Yeah. This man was so down, he couldn't go anywhere. But God who knew she cannot move, moved to her. He saw her lay flat and knew the word is saw him lay. Saw him lie down and knew. How down are you that you don't think God can see you? How terrible is your condition that you and I think God doesn't know? I'm glad to tell you, he knows every time you are flat. He knows the time you are managing. I told my cousin this morning, I said, every human being is sick somehow, but everybody has to fight whatever is wrong with them. Some of us are not sick in body. Some of us are not sick in mind. Some of us are not sick in marriage. Some of us have pocket ache. Some of us have naira ache. Some of us have relationship ache. Some of us have I don't know what to do ache. But every human being here, in one way or the other, have an infirmity. Your infirmity should not affect your totality. Because Jesus is on the way coming to where you are lying. The fact that you left home this morning, it was God that took you up. He has known where you are. He knows how long you have been there. 38 years. What would have thought Jesus would say? I understand how you feel. 38 years. I'm very sorry. I heard all that has happened. Oh, you have emaciated. Your color has changed. Oh, your face has changed. Your bones are now out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. When he saw him lie, knew he had been there for a long time. He said unto him, Do you need a change? First, no matter how many we are, God can single you out. Somebody didn't hear what I said. I said somebody didn't hear what I said. God will single you out of the crowd. Certain man was dead. Certainly sick for certainly 38 years. I suddenly Jesus too. Do you need a change? And look at what he said. Master, this is my own version, according to the Hosea translation. Sir, no one understands how I feel, not even you. And I have no man who cares to help me fall to the water when it's troubled. Every time I try to go when the water is troubled, another person who hates me and stronger than me jumped there before me. Complain. The question we was, do you need a change? The answer should have been quickly. Yes. Your complaint and my complaint. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com. 
the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Do you need a relocation? Wish yes, in my town, wizard in my village, may come to town and then sit for my money. Hi, if you know what I hear in my office, somebody said the witches in Okodua, Uzea, Uro, Eboi, Arwe. Udomi, which is travel from there. If they have visa to travel, they will not come to Benin. They will fly to New York to go and get a job. Sometimes I think that you are the one who is silly at those wizards. If any man can fly, he will not stop in Benin. He will fly straight to Paris and get a new resident visa. For somebody to tell you black to come and sit on your money and you believe it. One of my little sisters said, Mother, you know, the time you came to a house, every time you move, I say you are the one moving. Mm -hmm. If your head is correct, all of you have I'm saying now. Is your head correct? <laughs> How can a person step to your house, then your business is no more moving away? When you know that what you buy on earth is burning heaven. And what you lose on earth is losing heaven. You think a wizard will come and sit on me now? If you know any wizard, give him my home address. If you think if he come there, he will go back? Show my name before any wizard in this town. Just say, Archbishop Idahosa. You must have made yourself a rake. You must have made yourself a sweeping broom. That's why they handle you and sweep the ground. Christians say, my business, which is sat on it. Wizard, and then sat on my, then, then my. Another one say, the reason I'm not clever is because they put something in my head. Take it away. For no weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
and any tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Somebody say hallelujah. Do you need a chance? Do you need a chance? Do you need a chance? Yeah. Say yes, Lord. Jesus said unto him, After 38 years, Sit down, sit down so I can tell you what Jesus said. Everybody find a seat, find a seat. Jesus said unto him, Say that with me. Rise and take up your bed. So none of you went to school. Rise. I say, rise. Sit down one more time. This is the last time when the policies and power will ever put you on the floor. Jesus said unto him, arise. All right, I permit you to conk the head of anybody who is sitting down. How can you do that? I say, arise. Get up. Say boldly with me from now. I'm standing to fall no more. No power will send me down anymore. Arise. The years you were fat, notwithstanding. It doesn't matter how long you have been on the ground. It doesn't matter how many people tie you down. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. 
So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odisha. And we went to put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahoza University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis who went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. 
We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where Nobody wants to go, or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door, I stood at the door with my back laid at the door, one one eye on this side and one eye on the front door, and he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, "What is the name of the child?" What do you mean the girl name? I said it's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in a, ordinary native daughter, tried to can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, we God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> Another look back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, Maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior, and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he was also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Father Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Ben Sindaosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher. Uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. It also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Half Bishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.